All right, let's look at isosceles triangles and let's start with some vocabulary. An isosceles triangle, we've mentioned this in an earlier video, by definition has at least two congruent sides. Okay, so if this were an isosceles triangle from appearances, these would be the two congruent sides. Those two sides are called, just like in a right triangle, those are the legs of the triangle. An isosceles triangle does not have a hypotenuse. The third side that's not congruent to those or just the, the third side, this is called the base of the triangle. So the two congruent sides are legs, the other side is the base. The angle where the two congruent sides connect, this angle, is called the vertex angle of the triangle. And the other two angles along the base are called, you might guess, the base angles in an isosceles triangle. So I wanna take just a moment with my compass and do just a very quick exploration. So I'm going to construct an isosceles triangle. I've got a setting on my compass this will be the vertex. And I'm gonna mark off a side here. So this is going to be one side of my triangle down to that mark. And then I'm gonna mark off another side. And again, just go from here down to that mark. Because I used my compass to construct those two segments, they're equal in length. So these would be the legs of my, these are the legs, and then this is the base of my triangle. And what I wanna explore is the measure of these two base angles in my isosceles triangle. So I'm just gonna use a piece of tracing paper quickly And the measure of that angle, if I come over here, is exactly equal to the measure of that other base angle. And that is our first theorem about isosceles triangles. Basically, it says in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent. I'm going to word it just a little differently, but it means the same thing. If a triangle has two congruent sides, and by the way, that's gonna make it isosceles, then the angles opposite or across from, the angles opposite the two sides are congruent. And those angles that I just mentioned um, excuse me, I should say the angles, plural. These angles are the base angles of the isosceles triangle, okay? So the sides are congruent. If we go across from those sides, these two angles are congruent to each other. That's what the isosceles triangle theorem says. Well, it turns out that the converse of this is true as well. And I could construct it for you again. Um, and if I did, I would start with two congruent angles and then you would see that it formed an isosceles triangle. So let's just write this down and we'll draw just a quick illustration. So um, if a triangle has two congruent angles, so those would be the base angles, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. Okay, remember with the converse, it's kind of like which comes first, the chicken or the egg, and it doesn't matter. So if we have a triangle and we know that I'm gonna do these angles this time. We know that these two angles are congruent to each other. 
then according to this theorem, then we can go this way and we would know for sure that this side was congruent to that one and therefore we have an isosceles triangle, okay? All right, let's look briefly at an equilateral triangle. And what I want you to do is I want you to put parentheses like this because we're gonna fill in the blank there in just a second. So equilateral means equal sides. So if we draw a triangle, quite frankly, it'll look like a lot of the other ones I drew up there, just sketching it, but now it has all three sides congruent to each other. Is this isosceles? Well, the answer is it's also isosceles because it has at least two congruent sides. So everything that's true about the isosceles triangle up there will automatically be true about this equilateral triangle. So here's a pair of congruent sides. If I go across from those sides, these are the two angles that are congruent, but these two sides are congruent as well. And if I go across from these two sides, across from this side, I've already marked the angle congruent, across from that one, it would also have to be congruent. So in an equilateral triangle, all of the angles have to be congruent because of the isosceles triangle theorem. So we have three angles in a triangle, and we know that all three of them add up to 180. So 60 degrees will be the measure of each angle. And because an isos, excuse me, an equilateral triangle also has three equal angles, another name for it is if it's equilateral, it's also going to be equiangular. All three pair of angles will be congruent.